9 Ways to Prepare for Upcoming Food Shortages In March, President Biden said food shortages are going to happen. It's important to prepare now before it's too late and learn ways to prepare for upcoming food shortages. We've been hearing this for a long time, especially surrounding the recent pandemic. When Russia invaded Ukraine, it had fuel to the fire and it looks like it's only a matter of time before we see it come to full fruition. President Biden said Thursday that a food shortage is going to be real following the sanctions that were placed on Russia by the US government as a result of Russian President Vladimir Putin's invasion into Ukraine. While I don't consider myself a prepper in an end-of-the-world sense, I do like to be prepared for likely scenarios. Food shortages coming as a result of a major conflict, high costs of inputs like fertilizer, and supply chain disruptions, seem very likely right now. I hope that it does not happen, especially not to an extreme. However, in times of conflict, uncertainty, or in times of peace, it is good to be prepared. If you are prepared you are able to feel more peace. The food shortage potential was said once and then quickly fell aside to other more pressing news stories. I don't think the media will fully cover the threat of food shortages until it is too late. Update. The baby formula shortage is just one small example of how dear the situation became before any action was taken. That is why it is so important to act now. Here are some ways that you can prepare yourself and your family for upcoming shortages. Also, please make sure you encourage your loved ones to be prepared too if they aren't already. The more we can encourage and share this wisdom with those around us, the better off we will be as a whole. Number 1 Don't panic buy, instead buy 2. Every time you head to the store, buy 2 of what you need instead of 1, if it is a non-perishable item. Let's say for example you need 1 jar of peanut butter. Buy 2 containers of peanut butter and only eat the first. The second is for storage. When you run out of the jar you bought, don't use your storage. Go to the store and buy two more. Then repeat the process of eating one and storing one. This allows you to slowly build up your food storage without breaking the bank. If you use this method it will help ease the cost. When you have your supply built up and you should still go buy a new jar but only what you need. After bringing it home, don't use the new one, Put it in storage and use an older jar that is getting closer to the expiration date. You should always be using your oldest food first. Number 2 Grow a Garden I know not everyone has the ability to grow a garden or even wants to do it, but for those who are able it is a great way to have some food security. Those living in urban areas can consider a community garden, or growing in pots on balconies. If that isn't an option, growing sprouts indoors or even microgreens under grow lights is a possibility. In suburban areas you may have a yard that is large enough to grow some food in the ground. Raised beds are an option for keeping it neat and tidy but you can also grow food straight in your soil. Even though an in-ground garden seems old school it is still the most budget-friendly method. I can attest that it works great. There is definitely a learning curve to gardening, and if you want to make sure you have food via this method, it's best to start now and get an idea of how to garden before there are shortages. Number 3 Buy locally If you don't want to grow a garden or you can't grow everything in your garden, then buy locally. I can't stress strongly enough how important this is. Too much of our food supply has gone overseas and the rest is run by large corporations and farmers with massive operations. Aside from the current world situation, I often think if there is one large-scale trucking strike, then people are going to go hungry because so much of our food is shipped and our food supply is so interconnected. In addition to that example, if there were some kind of plant disease that affects a certain variety of food, there would be a massive impact. I often think corn would be a major one because so many foods and other products are derived from it. 
This has happened many times in history before, the Irish potato famine being just one example. The more small and local farmers there are, the more types of food will be grown and the more areas it can be grown in. Small local farmers are also more likely to have diverse crops. This is insurance we have against situations like I mentioned above. As our family has started dipping our toes into farming, I am realizing more and more that if there was demand, and we knew there would always be people there willing to buy, we would work to meet it. Small local farmers need you to buy their food not just in hard times but all the time. This is the way to combat frightening food scarcity situations. Number 4 Make sure you are prepared with more than just food. A reserve of gas, oil, extra clothing, shoes, water, medicines, nutritional supplements, paper goods, bidet or toilet paper, building supplies, etc. is needed to be prepared. Why would you need those things for food shortages? A scarcity mentality causes people to panic buy. If food shortages are happening, there is likely to be shortages in other areas too. There was no actual shortage until the public decided that it was in high demand. In actuality, there are already shortages of many of these non-food items already because of supply chain issues, a pandemic, and conflict. Number 5 Learn Preservation Skills In most places, there is a winter where crops freeze, stagnate, or grow very slowly. If you're growing food or buying food locally, in order to have food through winter or when there are failed crops, you need to have some food preserved. Just like I mentioned with gardening, there is a learning curve. You build confidence in preservation skills with time. There are many methods of preserving, some take equipment but others you can use basic kitchen tools. For long-term storage, I recommend freeze-drying and dehydrating. Shorter-term preservation for food through winter can be done through fermentation, canning, or freezing. Here are some related posts I have that may help with embarking into food preservation. Food Dehydration 101 Favorite books for preserving How to freeze green beans Canning equipment list Canning mistakes to avoid Canning recipes that actually taste good Number 6 Buy in bulk and buy whole grains for long-term storage a great way to prepare for food shortages is to buy foods in bulk. I buy all my bulk grains from Azure Standard. My first choice would be to buy grains locally, but I haven't found a local grower. The next best thing has been Azure. They have a lot of foods that I can't grow like coconut milk for a good price and almost always have organic options. Shipping from them is cheap for heavy items because they are shipped in a group order for everyone at your drop and the drops along the way. The only thing about Azure if you pick up at a drop is that you need to have a flexible schedule that allows you to pick up when they arrive. Most whole grains like wheat have a very long shelf life 25 plus years. I personally think that grains, if you eat them, need to be the foundation of your food storage. If you store wheat or dent corn, I highly recommend purchasing a grain mill. I recommend getting something a little more quality if you want it to be reliable. Number 7 Get out of debt and never go into it. This may seem like an odd way to prepare for food shortages but it is so necessary to be prepared financially too. Many think that it's more important to have food for a possible shortage and buy it on a credit card to get there. Don't do that. Financial problems make it so you are unable to handle other emergencies in your life and will give you fewer options. A mortgage may be necessary but stay away from consumer debt and pay off any student loans. Number 8 Learn how to cook from scratch. In our industrialized food world it has become uncommon to cook from scratch. These basic skills are necessary if you store long-term foods like whole grains. 
You also need to know how to cook if you buy whole foods from local farmers. Oftentimes people have different definitions of cooking from scratch. In this case, I'm talking about true cooking from scratch, where if you need to add dressing or mayonnaise, you make it yourself. If you need to add pasta, you make it yourself. Number 9 Find a community of like-minded people in your area. My sister Amy and I were talking recently about how important it is to build relationships with neighbors and friends locally that are like-minded. Even though in the country our neighbors are more spread out, we've been blessed with kind neighbors and we help each other when needed. My neighbors are so kind they have offered for us to borrow livestock trailers, tractor attachments, and one of my neighbors said, if you ever need a bale of hay, feel free to take one from my pile. With that being said this is just some of the things that you may need if shit was to hit the fan keep in mind things like livestock pet food and other things you may also need if things were to get worse than they already are but I'm a going leave it at that note if you like what was in this video please subscribe to the channel to stay up to date.